in the state of Florida. We're obviously uh, going to be uh, going to be helping any way we can. I've just spoken with a lot of folks throughout, you know, Florida about. I mean, look, I think there's a frustration with this. I mean, you know, you have foreign military personnel coming to our base. Uh, they should not be doing that if they hate our country. And uh, I know that I talked with Secretary Esper on Friday. They're doing a big review about how all this stuff is done in terms of the vetting. Um, but my sense is, is that more needs to be done. Um, and I think that this is something that, that, that should not have been allowed to happen. So um, uh, we're here in the state. We're going to continue to offer support. I was able to speak with the president again about it last night and um, spoke with Congressman Gates today. So we're, um, you know, we're here to do, to do what we can. After this, I will be going with the First Lady uh, to the hospital. We're going to meet with some of the folks um, who were injured um, during, the, um, uh, during the altercation. With that, I'm going to introduce uh, Admiral Mays, who's the uh, uh, Navy Southeast Region Commander. Thank you, Governor. I'd like to uh, read a statement. I am uh, Navy Rear Admiral Gary Mays, Commander of Navy Region Southeast. I just came from the funeral procession and the remains of our three fallen shipmates are currently on their way to Dover Air Force Base in Delaware. Friday's senseless act, violence took these young men from us, physically wounding eight others and the hearts of countless more. On behalf of the entire Navy, I extend my sincere and deepest sympathies to the families of the sailors whose lives were taken during this heinous act. In painful times like these, we also see the true strength and character of our interagency partnership. Naval Security Forces responded to the scene immediately, and within minutes, the Escambia County first responders arrived and they worked together seamlessly. In the crisis, just as they trained. This team honed skills and they hoped they would never have to use, but when called upon, they responded with such expertise and determination that they most certainly saved the lives of many others. The whole community response continues and the Navy will continue to work closely with local, county, state, and federal enforcement in support of the FBI's investigation into this tragic incident. For the Navy, our primary focus remains on taking care of the families and friends of the victims, as well as ensuring the service members, civilians, and families of NAS Pensacola receive the support that they need. The Navy chaplains are available for pastoral care. An emergency family assistance center has been established at the Fleet and Family Service Center, and the additional counselors are available to help the team already here in Pensacola. I urge anyone who feels they need a little extra support to reach out and get the help they need to process and rebuild and strengthen your personal resilience. Asking for a sign of strength, be strongest as a team. The installation is currently open only to mission essential personnel. Back to routine, routine access tomorrow morning, know that the security forces are doing what needs to be done to make NAS Pensacola and bases and installations around the world as safe as possible. We will continue to work with our partners in law enforcement to investigate, review, and guard against future vulnerabilities and to safeguard the security of our service members and their families. Their safety is paramount. The citizens of Pensacola have been incredibly generous. difference during the process of healing and recovery. On behalf of Navy leadership, I would again like to thank the hard work and dedication of everyone here and the entire community. Well, thank you. Anyone, any questions for anybody? Governor, you know the, uh, the, that Pensacola and NAS Pensacola have a deep relationship with each other. 
What kind of resources is the state providing both to the base as well as the community? Well, we've provided um, folks, uh, so our Department of Emergency Management in immediately descended and uh, was deployed for any type of mental health. We've also sent DCF uh, to the hospitals to work with any of the families for any um, uh, issues that they may be having. And then FDLE is a part of uh, the law enforcement. Obviously, it's being led by the FBI. Um, you, know, you have ATF involved. Uh, but we are assisting um, with, with some of the interviews and some of the things that they're doing to, to gather more facts. Okay, you mentioned that uh, foreign military should not be coming here if they hate our country. What information do you have that the judge Al-Shamani hated the United States? Have you read any of the reports? I mean, I mean, come on. He obviously, I mean, he had a, a, a major social media trail. This guy was, uh, was somebody who... Um, you know, just had a deep-seated hatred for the United States, and and that was that was pretty clear from from that, um, and and obviously the fact that he would do something like this, and so you know my my view is is that um, you know for us to be bringing in these foreign nationals, um, you have to take precautions to protect the the country, and um, the fact of the matter is, I mean, bringing in people from Saudi Arabia, um, you know, the, the, you just you, you need to be be on guard on that. Um, it's not like we're dealing with, I mean, the bottom line is, I think it's going to be reviewed by the Secretary of Defense. I spoke with them. The President said they're reviewing it. Um, but I think that this is something to, to have this individual be able to take out three of our sailors. Um, you know, to me, that's unacceptable. And I think it could have been prevented are with better vetting. Are there different guy, security guy, procedures as foreign nationals come on and off the base? Um, as opposed to U.S. sailors that are there? Well, I think the I can let it's, uh, Admiral Mays, but I think sure. basically they get an ID card, and I think they'd be able to ingress and egress similar to an uh, active duty member? Uh, yes, there is a vetting process that they uh, go through prior to uh, coming to the country, and then the Department of Defense vets those that are coming for DOD-related training. So there'd be no reason to check for a gun um, as they're coming on and off the base? Uh, guns are not allowed on right. the base without uh, prior permission. And so we can do random measures such as inspect vehicles for uh, weapons. Mm -hmm. sure, I think the sh I sheriff I wanted to add something real quick. Just then we'll have yeah, to your question, let me, let me put this in a perspective that, that I'm dealing with in my community right now. Okay. If you want to know what the impact of this has been. By the way, my background is military. I'm a retired Air Force officer. I have trained with, uh, you know, Iranian at the time, Allied forces when the Shah of Iran was still in power, uh, Kuwaitis, you know, many, many from the Middle East and from the United Arab Emirates. What I'm hearing from our community is, is, number one, Sheriff, how could this happen? We opened our country to the Allied officers. We opened our hearts. Many of the folks that surround our military base, for, for those of you that don't know, they do sponsorships where they sponsor officers into their homes to do a cultural exchange. And so to have had that tremendous openness with this individual, and then you should have walked the crime scene with us, and you'd understand the anger in this community right now, where the innocents that were murdered in that training building is something that would stay with you for the rest of your life. So I will tell you it will be a very long time before this community, the military and the civilian community, gets over this because we are an open, giving, loving people. And that has been betrayed. Was the shooter hosted by a family? I can't speak to that issue. I've not received a briefing from the FBI. Sheriff, sure. was, the, was the shooter hosted by a family? Do you know? Are you aware? I, I, no, I'm unaware. Can I ask you about, about the issue of guns? The foreign nationals can apparently buy guns. I think many of us were surprised by this under certain circumstances. Is that something that's concerned you? Will we will be looking at those kind of regulations? Well, that's a federal uh, uh, loophole that, that he took advantage of. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a big supporter of the Second Amendment, but the Second Amendment applies so that we, the American people, can keep and bear arms. It does not apply to Saudi Arabians. And so um, he had no constitutional right to do that for sure. Um, why the federal, uh, the federal law has that, I'm just not sure. I was not aware of that. My, I had always thought that foreign nationals, except for certain law enforcement, 
just just were not uh, allowed to purchase um, firearms. So um, yeah, I think that they should definitely look at that. Governor, do you know, do you know if you actually told them or whether there were other people involved in this? Uh, they're investigating that still now. So they they they're doing a, a bunch of stuff with that, and um, I think some of the reports you've seen about. Uh, watching videos and things like that. I mean, obviously there were other people involved with that. D did they know or not know about what was going to happen? I think that that's still under investigation. Governor, Admiral, if, I, if I could ask you a question of, about the gun issue. Um, a lot of people, because this is not the first time there's been an attack on a military base in this country, uh, a lot of discussion has been even said about why are guns even prohibited on a military base, uh, which deny people the right to uh, defend themselves. Have you talked to the president or you've given any thought yourself about changing that policy? Uh, I've not uh, spoken with the president. Uh, the, w our biggest prim uh, primary uh, uh, focus is the safety of the base. And we have rules to maintain that safety and guns are prohibited on the installation uh, without prior approval. Governor, you, you local media, the sheriff mentioned the level of so. impact yeah. here in the community, and this is a community that elected you as their governor. What is your message for those that have a lot of fears right now going into this next work week? Well, I would say stay strong. I mean, you saw in this dark day, even in the midst of that, what you saw were people running to the danger to be able to save others. And that's really, I think, what this community is made of. And I think that that's really emblematic of the type of, uh, uh, of, the type of grit, courage, and determination that you see here. Um, you know, obviously, I mentioned Ensign Watson, and he deserves a, a, a lot of credit. And he, you know, unfortunately passed away, but he passed away a hero. You look at the, dep the sheriff's deputies, how quickly they were able to get in there. Uh, they save lives as well. Um, so I think that the community responded very, very well um, to this to this um, um, to this event, and I think the the issues with it probably lie more in in things that are outside the community the community's control. Some of the things that I've mentioned. Governor, Governor, with that, um, we've been here for several days, and we've heard so many stories of bravery and courage displayed by those officers that raced in towards the gunfire. What else could you tell us about those officers? Well, I think the sheriff could, could probably fill in some more, but I, we were, as we were coming in here, we met with the dispatcher. So, I mean, I think the response time was just a few, few minutes, right? Um, and so you have an active shooter, and, and obviously you had Ensign Watson, you had the, the um, uh, I know at least one of the other um, enlisted who, who ended up dying. Um, you know, they were actively helping to, to direct where, where the response should go. And then you have the deputies in there uh, returning fire and really preventing uh, a lot more people from getting shot. And so, you know, you train for that, um, and the sheriff trains them for that. But, you know, until it's go time, you never know kind of what's going to happen. And I would say that um, the sheriff and his deputies, um, you know, they performed exemplary. And I think that the folks here in Escambia County should, should be very proud of what they did. And, Governor, will you be reviewing the response as well, all the things that went right, maybe even any improvements that could be made out of this? I'm sure this would be a learning experience for a lot of people, right? No, yeah, look, I mean, I think that anytime you have, uh, you know, folks do, do right, we obviously – you know, we'll focus a lot of times when things go bad, but you can also learn things from, you know, why were they able to stop, um, you know, and, and, and I think that that is a good lesson. Governor, are you, are you aware at this point um, whether the perpetrator spent uh, any amount of time in Pensacola prior to the attack and whether the so-called dinner party took place on or off? Oh, so he, he's been in this area for... Uh, quite some, what, at least a year and a half or two years on it. Now, you know where, when they do the training, they, um, they're they here. Because it's a long training pipeline, they'll actually be given time. So I do believe he went back to Saudi Arabia. I know they're investigating that now. Um, he recently had been in New York and some of these other places. So, But, yeah, no, he was stationed here. So this is where he was. Um, I think it's who else was, uh, would have had knowledge, who else was involved, um, but then also what vetting takes place, not just on our end, which I think is important, 
but what is what type of vetting is done by the Saudi military and the Saudi government um, to try to ferret out people who who may end up um, you know having this type of, of worldview so uh, I know Esper is doing stuff with DOD and I think they need to do that very quickly um, Saudi Arabia has as you know pledged cooperation um, you, know, you can ask some of the other folks um, with the agencies whether they've actually received any yet I, I don't know um, but you know my view would be um, you know trust but verify if they say they're going to cooperate Make sure they do cooperate and, and don't just take uh, lip service and think that, that, that that's enough um, because this is, um, you know, this, is, this is a really big deal. And um, you know, we can't control every little thing that happens. But when you have somebody that comes from a foreign military that we're training on one of our bases, this iconic base right here, that all these aviators who get their wings have come through here one time or another, the Blue Angels are here, um, and you do something like this, you know, we're going to get the answers, and there's going to be accountability, and uh, and I'm going to do whatever I can as governor to make sure that that happens. Sure. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Are you students in the ABS yet? I did. Yeah. Are you satisfied with their explanation? I'm, I'm not satisfied with everything. I'm going to do some more investigation about how this interaction works in the blue hole. And Mr. President, uh, so